Hello friends, welcome back. It's Stephanie Valentine here, Mark behind the camera once more. It's been a little while since we've filmed a video. It's just been really busy and although also the weather has been like completely pants. Uh, this is like the first clear day we've had for weeks. So uh, fingers crossed it holds out for us today. So we're at another spooky haunted location and um, we're going to come back here at night and see if we can see anything. So we're here today in the, the little Oxford village of Godstow at the uh, ruins of Godstow Abbey also known as Godstow Nunnery. Now Godstow Nunnery this was established in uh, during the medieval period so during the 12th century by Ediva or Edith who was a noblewoman. Edith she was the widow of Sir William Launceline of Winchester and Edith she'd had a vision telling her to come to Oxford and to wait here until she had received a message from God. So she came to um, Oxford and she lived at Binsey for a little while which is not too far from here and um, just you know doing her thing and one night she heard a voice telling her to go to where the light from heaven touches the ground and there establish a nunnery for 24 of the most gentle women ye can find and the place that she saw the light from heaven was over Godstow. So she went to King Henry the first and she told him that she'd had this vision from God and with his help this place was established in 1133. Godstow was a nunnery for aristocratic ladies so a lot of wealthy and aristocratic women came here to become nuns. The abbey was built on what was originally an island between two streams that ran into the river Thames. The abbey was very impressive. It had a spectacular church, cloisters, a private chapel, lodgings for a priest. It was a really fantastic place. So the abbey continued until 1539, until the dissolution of the monasteries under Henry VIII, where it was taken apart basically. It was no longer a religious site. And the, the abbey and the grounds were actually destroyed and a manor house was built in its place, Godstow House. Godstow House was uh, damaged during the English Civil War in 1645 and a lot of people, a lot of the locals came here and they actually took the stone to be used for local buildings and it was just kind of left in disrepair. This is all that remains now. The ruins are said to be haunted, which is why we're here today. Romance and legend are synonymous with this place. The legend talks of a passionate love triangle between King Henry II, his wife, Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine and Henry's mistress, Rosamond de Clifford, also known as Rosamond the Fair. It's believed that Henry and Rosamond had had an affair since the mid 1160s. Now, this wasn't Henry's first affair, far from it. Henry and Eleanor, they didn't have the best marriage. Um, Henry was, well, always having affairs um, and he even had a couple of illegitimate children. The marriage was further strained when three of their sons decided to lead a rebellion in 1173 and they were planning to overthrow their father to bring down the king. Now this revolt didn't last very long and it failed only a year later. King Henry forgave his sons, but he ended up 
imprisoning his wife and Eleanor stayed locked up for the next 15 years until Henry's death in 1189. The same year that Eleanor was imprisoned, Henry and Rosamond's relationship came out into the open. Now, if you had a cynical mind, you could perhaps think that that was why Henry was very keen to keep his wife locked up in prison. It's quite suspicious, don't you think? I, hit, I think he did have an ulterior motive to, uh, to not let his wife go. Now, Henry and Rosamond, they'd been having an affair for, for quite a few years up to this point, although nobody knows the exact date of when they met. Rosamond lived at the Royal Palace in Woodstock, Oxfordshire. And no, it wasn't Blenheim Palace, in case that, you know, that's what you were thinking. Uh, this was hundreds of years before Blenheim Palace was even built. Sadly, and not surprisingly, Rosamond was seen as a scarlet woman and that the affair was all her fault. Not the king, oh no, not the king who had had multiple affairs throughout his lifetime, not the king who had a couple of illegitimate children, not the king who had kept his wife locked up. Oh, no, 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 he was so innocent and blameless. And let's not forget, he was the king. He most likely had all the power in this relationship. Now, Rosamond died in 1173 and she was only 30 years old. There were many that, that believed that Rosamond's death at such an age was actually karma, punishment for being such a hussy, basically, and for seducing the innocent king. Now, the myths surrounding Rosamond's death are what have intrigued people in particular over the years. Most of the myths, though, they didn't come around until much later, with the earliest appearing in the 14th century. There's one version of the myth that tells of how Eleanor, who was horribly jealous about the affair, quite understandably, she stabbed Rosamond, her love rival, to death. There was another version of the myth, told much later, that told a slightly different version, which was that this time, Eleanor made Rosamond choose between being stabbed or being poisoned. There was yet another version that talked of how uh, Rosamond would go and meet Henry at this elaborate maze at the Royal Palace in Woodstock and she would have around her waist a piece of silver thread and the other end of the thread would be with one of the king's knights and that was to ensure that she didn't get lost in the maze. Eleanor killed the knight and she followed the thread until she came across Rosamond and then she killed her. So the myths all tell a very similar story of a wronged wife who killed her love rival. And, you know, we have to remember that this myth was told over the years and we know what people are like. They tend to embellish, to exaggerate perhaps, and details were added and they were also taken away. Rosamond was buried here at Godstow. Some believe that Henry paid for her tomb and paid for the nuns to look after it throughout the following years. There isn't any evidence of this, but the nuns did take great care of Rosamond's tomb. They would lay candles on it daily and she was placed in front of the high altar. So a very honourable place indeed. 15 years after Rosamond's death, Bishop Hugh of Lincoln came to visit and he saw that the nuns were really looking after Rosamond's tomb and he was horrified. He did not like that a woman like her, somebody who had seduced the king and had an affair with him, 
that she was enjoying this privilege of these nuns looking after her tomb and this place of honour in the church. So he made the nuns move Rosamond's remains outside. It is said to be Rosamond's ghost that haunts these ruins. If the legends aren't true, if Eleanor didn't murder Rosamond, then maybe it was because her body was moved, disturbing her spirit, and therefore she's just remained at this place, wandering through the grounds, perhaps looking for the peace that was taken from her when she was moved. Like I said earlier, romance and legend are linked to this place and at the end of the day though the truth is all very sordid and unfortunately both women were very hard done by you know you've got Rosamond who was seen as this lascivious wench seducing the king and then you had Eleanor who was turned into a raging jealous murdering monster a ghost of a grey lady has been seen wandering around these ruins, believed to be Fair Rosamond. We are going to spend a few hours here tonight and we're going to see if we can experience any ghostly goings on. See if we can see a ghost perhaps, hear anything. We didn't have any luck at Minster Lovell so fingers crossed <laughs> we will experience something tonight. Hi. Hi. Um, so we're back here. It's dark now. Sorry for the awkward angle. Poor, poor Mark. He's trying to hold the camera and the light. And then I'm just here in the back like, <laughs> Hello. Ooh. So bright. Well, yeah. You are lighting up the the whole place basically. So yeah, this is what it looks like at night. So we're gonna kind of just hang around, um, see see what we see. We haven't got any fancy equipment again, but we're just gonna kind of wait and see if we can feel anything or see anything. Hmm. I forgot to mention um, earlier that Rosamond was never a nun. It's often kind of said that she was a nun and she came here, um, but she had nothing to do with this place until until she died and she was buried here. Um, but she was, you know, she came from an aristocratic family and because Godstow Abbey was um, a convent for wealthy women, uh, it was quite natural that she would be buried here and also she is said to still be buried here somewhere her grave is here somewhere but nobody knows where that is so she is lost unfortunately but I said oh my god the light is really <laughs> I think like, looking at that and then coming over here I, I thought I saw something and it really freaked me out just then Whew. Not yet. I'm going to try and like. I know Mark's probably like. Not rolling his eyes, but you know, I like to kind of try and tap into the feeling of the place without sounding too woo. Um, but I can't feel anything yet. Although I am a little bit creeped out. But then I'm always creeped out, so. There's no difference there. The moon, that looks so. You probably won't Which be able would be to see. Nice it. If you could see it, yeah. See oh, it, it looks amazing through the the windows. Can you see it's behind you there. Uh, <gasps> they can't. Oh, they can. Oh, no. Kind <gasps> of. Amazing. Oh, look. It's probably out of focus when they're looking at it, but there we are. There's us. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to hang around for for a while and see see if we can um, see anything. Oh. So while we're waiting for any ghosties, um, I would like you guys to send in 
any kind of spooky stories or kind of ghostly encounters that you have had and that you would like me to read out for a new series on our channel. So I haven't set up the email address yet. I will do by the time this goes up and I'll put a little link in the bio. So um, if you've had any kind of ghostly experiences or you've seen a ghost or um, anything like that, anything a little spooky or mysterious, then send me a message um, if you're happy for me to read out your story because we're going to have like, um, yeah, a little segment. It's going to kind of be like cozy campfire and I'm going to read out your ghost story. So send me your ghost stories and um, yeah, yay. <laughs> See, the problem with this, this method is that because of the bright lights, I can't see anything else anyway. So there could be a whole fleet of ghosts walking by right now. And I wouldn't know because I can't see a thing. Are there any ghosts out there? Do you want to come? So you can tap Steph on the shoulder this time. Yeah. Not me. Come on. Come and touch me. Come and touch me. Ooh. I'm ready. I'm waiting to be touched. That's only <laughs> Okay, so we're going to turn the light off um, in a minute and just stand here in, in the dark and we'll see if we can see fair Rosamond walking through. Um, she's said to be very, very beautiful. So um, hopefully we'll see, we'll see a lovely, beautiful ghost. Hello. 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 So we're wandering up and down the grounds. We are, even um, though you can't see this, we could be stepping in uh, <laughs> a big hole or a giant cow pack, which I think we just <laughs> Yes. Um, so we're walking very slowly. I've already tripped over a big stick. We're walking with the big light under our eyes so that you can actually see us mm -hmm. towards that sort of black blob in front of us, somewhere, somewhere over there, <laughs> which I, I believe is still the, uh, the nunnery, the abbey, um, the ruins. Hopefully not stepping in, I think. I'll just check. No, we haven't stood anything yet. <gasps> Can you see something over there? No, shut up. Um, Oops. <laughs> I can see somebody walking into me and they're called <laughs> Steph. I felt a presence and it was um, her. Ooh, spooky. He's really taking this very seriously. We, anyway. We are very profesh about all of this. Anyway, I, we, one day we will get the lighting sorted out so that it doesn't look really weird. Um, hello. <laughs> nice to see you again anyway. Um, yes, how have you all been? Hopefully you've had uh, a nice month after we last checked in. Um, obviously you've been listening to Steph's cup of terror stories. Yeah, I hope um, you've been enjoying those. Yeah, I've been behind the camera mm -hmm. uh, and everything and, and playing. So I do. Anyway, um, yeah, and now we're here, so hopefully you'll enjoy this, even though uh, all you're getting is our faces <laughs> and it's black. So basically we could have done this in our back garden. What's that now? Could have been. Uh, I Ooh. don't know. It looked like something. Spooky I owl. Hit my eyes playing tricks on me. Anyway. I like how like, my face is like peering over the top of your shoulder. No, I like that though. Oh, I like that. Like <laughs> anyway. We're walking back to the uh, very near... You're not taking this at all seriously. <laughs> and the camera can't focus on the clothes like this. So anyway, we're walking back. And uh, so far we've seen and heard nothing apart from... Oh, traffic. I just heard something. Anyway. Oh, it's, honestly, no, it sounded like it came from the, the like ruins of the chapel. Well, I don't want to go in there then. Could be, could be a passing person. Shall I go in? Shall I poke my head round? Uh, you can. I'll poke this. Oh, right. I'm going to aim this. This big light here. That's, 
It's very muddy, so. Yeah, the big heron here is mud and cow pads. I thought I heard a strange noise just then. Well, it could have been a ghost cow. Oh, I would love to see a ghost cow. Ghost cow would be some sort of ghost I wouldn't mind seeing. Um, so Steph is, is right by me here. Hello. You know. See, I heard that other sound just then. That was rail. That was some road lorry kind of thing. Was it? It sounded. It didn't sound like that. Like a. Like a, a growling thing. noise. Well, is it a growling nun? <laughs> Hold on, she's not a nun, is she? No, she's not a nun. She's not a nun. People think she's a nun, but she's not. So we've been here about, I don't know, 20 or so minutes. We have. Um, so far we haven't seen anything, although I have heard a couple of random little noises. But I know Mark's going to be like, that's traffic, or that's nature, like he said last time. <laughs> More than likely traffic and not nature. He has a squeaky noise. For the observant viewers, you may have just heard Steph say she heard a squeaking noise. I didn't hear a squeaking noise. Now... <coughs> well, there might be a ghost squeak then that only I heard. That's a really weird kind of ghost, <laughs> isn't it? The squeaking ghost that only <laughs> certain people have uh, the ability to hear. <laughs> Maybe. So... In conclusion, from tonight's... Are you a non-believer? Um, I'm a believer in lots of things. Um, I believe in the possibility of things. Not necessarily that there is a ghost walking around squeaking. <laughs> well, no, she might not be squeaking, but maybe she's pushing something? Or Oh, I don't know. Pushing a Some thing. Pushing a pram. Like yeah, maybe. Or a medieval pram. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Are we drawing any conclusions from this evening's spooky um, times? No, not yet. Well, I think we're going to hang out here a bit longer. And then we'll give you an update. Um, see if we've seen anything. Heard any more squeaks. Um, yeah, okay. So see you in about half an hour. Bye. Okay, wow. so, yeah, it's been about half an hour. Um, I definitely feel a little bit kind of chilled. Um, and not just because it's a bit chilly, but, yeah. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know, I didn't see anything. Um, I didn't hear any more squeaks. Bit of a spooky place. It is. It's really, like, really beautiful tonight. There's... Um, a gorgeous big moon and it's so bright and you can see basically the whole of like this inner courtyard bit um, and I can totally imagine you know uh, a grey lady just kind of walking through yeah I wish we'd seen her today um, but oh well one day we'll see something although I don't know there were a couple of spooky I saw uh, again, it's quite hard to say whether it was just my eyes playing tricks on me in the shadows or whether I did see something. Never know. Is he rolling his eyes again? I'm not looking at the thing. No, of course <laughs> not. <laughs> non believer We'll probably see it when we're walking home. Uh, not home, back to the car. That would be cool. And uh, we'll something. have a camera on. Mm. That made a weird noise. Again, it was a branch of a tree wobbling a bit. I didn't hear it. Therefore, there it, it was not a, not a ghostly experience. Ooh. So, yeah, please send in your ghost stories that you'd like us to read out. Don't make them up. Send um, in your real experiences. Yes. Real experiences only. Even if they sound crazy, Yes. Uh, go with it. Hey, look, you know, it's me. I believe like anything, so... Don't you worry. And so I won't be there to say, that doesn't <laughs> make any sense. <laughs> um, so yes, the email address will be down in the description-y, boxy thing. So or maybe even on the screen if we get it done in time. Oh yeah, maybe. Like now. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, send us your stories, your experiences. Um, if you've got any suggestions of where we should go next for our next ghost stories and spooky tales, um, yep, let us know. Hopefully the weather is actually going to start improving and we'll actually be able to go to places without it raining all the time. So, yay. Cool. Well, have you? did you feel, see or hear anything tonight? Um, uh, I felt my arm was hurting. I was <laughs> holding the camera out <laughs> quite a way. I felt, you know, it's a spookyish place if you believe in it being spooky. And the more you tell yourself you might experience something, you'll kind of get the vibe of something and get the chills going on. But, you know, there's animals, rabbits, badgers around, and they're probably causing more noise than, than, than a grey lady. But, hey, that's just me. Wow. I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> well, on that note. Thanks for joining us again, guys. And until next time, bye. See you later.